As you look at the figures, Sir David, do you see a plateau? Good morning to you. I think there is a plateau, um, but if I look at the figures, of course, I am really saddened by the omission of deaths outside hospitals. Uh, it means that uh, we really haven't a clue where we are. If it, if it is 50% more, which is quite likely, as we see now, uh, than the deaths in hospitals, then the uh, comparison with other countries is beginning to look really awful. And I'm, I'm just very saddened by the predicament we're in. Uh, why we didn't respond so much sooner once this uh, epidemic broke out in China, I, I simply don't know. And I say this because in 2006, we published a report on actions needed to deal with a pandemic. And in that report, we showed that if an outbreak occurred of any new virus of this kind, anywhere in the world, within three months due to air travel, it would be everywhere in the world. And that, of course, is what has happened. And it seems that we were unprepared and we didn't take action. Imagine 16th of March having uh, a horse race go on with a massive crowd at Cheltenham. Uh, we didn't manage this until too late, and uh, every day, uh, and every day's delay has resulted in further uh, deaths in the United Kingdom. Well, indeed, you refer to Cheltenham, of course, Sir David. That's actually it's not one day; it was five day meetings, and people came from all over Europe, and particularly in Ireland. And and it is now known to have caused some of the spread. Do you think the government was complacent, negligent, asleep at the wheel? How would you characterise it, Sir David? Yes, well, I, I think I think it, it really is very difficult because it goes right back to uh, 2010 when the government came in with a very clear policy to reduce public spending across the board, including the National Health Service. And I'm afraid these austerity measures did lead to the cutting back on the risk management programs. Um, and, and clearly this also managed to cause problems with, uh, with flooding across the UK. We were much better prepared for better spending for the Environment Agency on that, and, and equally unprepared for pandemics. For me, this is very upsetting because we had set this uh, preparation process in place, as I say, back in 2006. Is it as simple to say, therefore, that the austerity measures cost lives? Absolutely. That, that is what I'm saying. What does the government need to do now? Well, the government at this point in time needs to, uh, I think, massively step up measures. Uh, step up measures, we know they're stepping up measures uh, to, to see that testing is done on a much wider scale. Until we get testing done on a very much wider scale, we're not going to begin to manage this. Um, if, if we go around the world and see where there has been better behavior, it isn't only in the wealthy countries. You go to Greece and uh, the management of the epidemic starting very, very early on has been really astoundingly good. Going to Africa, go to Rwanda, you'll find the same thing. So I think it, it has been taking the eye off the ball, hoping that it would somehow blow away. Um, and we, we are acting too late in rugby terms. This is a hospital pass to anyone in the driving seat at this point in time. Uh, and you mentioned quite rightly the behaviour of other countries. When you factor in where the UK finds itself now, do you imagine that the what, what could have possibly persuaded the teams, whoever it was, not to include deaths in care homes? I, I can't for the life of me, because we know that France has and other countries have, I can't see the rash, any rationale. Can you, Sir David? No, I can't at all. And, I mean, it's, it's awful to think that this was an attempted spin um, but I, I'm afraid that we we do have a problem with spin from uh, from government uh, over the over the last ten years plus, and uh, I think I think what what governments have to learn is put the data out into the public domain, put the scientists out into the public domain. It's so important that the public is fully informed. There is a science advisory team on the pandemic. <clears throat> What, what are they saying? Can we please have it in the public domain? And very much on that um, point, 
Downing Street is facing growing calls to end the secrecy around SAGE, the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies, which obviously gives evidence to the Prime Minister and his team. They meet this week to review the lockdown, but we don't see the minutes, we don't know the members. How, how correct is that in your view, Sir David? Well, I mean, I, I think that is, is simply disastrous. We, we need to take the public with us. We, I mean the government. We need to take the public with us on, on these exercises. Here, we, we have heard about the request by the, from within the Department of Health for an investigation into the preparedness of our National Health Service for a pandemic in 2015. Uh, that report was never put into the public domain. One has to assume a report was made, and I think there is a, an indication that the report was extremely critical, that we were no longer prepared for a pandemic.